Let's talk about repair in a running Cassandra cluster, an old and very important topic. And probably one that if you talk to other folks that have been running a Cassandra cluster for a long time, they know well about repair. But it doesn't have to be painful. It's just something you need to understand how it works. And with DSC 6, it's actually going to be a lot less of a problem for you. So what is a repair? That is a good question. A lot of times I hear folks that are new to Cassandra say, you know, repair, that means it's broken, right? The original term for repair was anti-entropy repair, meaning that there was some bad things that had happened somewhere in the cluster that you're accounting for. When you're running a large-scale distributed system, a lot of times things just randomly go bad. A bit gets dropped, a disk doesn't do it right, something may happen. And as that happens over time, you start getting a degraded quality of your data. You need a process that runs behind the scenes that can fix that. That is ultra important if you want your data to be consistent over time. So a repair in a Cassandra cluster is that. It's a consistency check across all the nodes to make sure that all the data is correct. So when does it occur? Well, a few times. There's an actual action where you can say, I want to run a repair. That's a node tool repair command. Or in some sort of operation in like a read. A read operation at Quorum, if it notices there's inconsistency, it will rectify that with a repair. And more interestingly, if you're using something like a consistency level of one, there's something called a read repair chance. And that's just there to make sure that it runs a repair when you do a one. It happens periodically and by default, 10% of the reads at one. You can bring it up or turn it off. Usually the default's just fine. So why is it so necessary? There are situations where a repair is absolutely necessary. For instance, if a node goes offline for a long period of time, beyond the GC grace, meaning how long that it stores hints on the other nodes, well, if it goes offline for that much longer, then you need to run a repair to make sure that all of that data is consistent once that node goes offline. This is mandatory. Another situation is if perhaps maybe it overloaded and missed some writes. This can happen in a large system. You just have a bad day for one node. That can make your data inconsistent. Repair will fix that problem. So how does a repair work? Well, there's a couple of stages that happen. First, when a node goes to another node and says, hey, let's look at our consistency, what it does is it creates what's called a Merkle tree. A Merkle tree is a data structure that shows all the differences from one thing to the other. This is a data structure that's created just to show this is data that's missing on this node. Once the Merkle tree is created, then it uses that to stream data from the right node to the node that needs the data. So this is how it keeps up its consistency. So it's more or less a two-stage process. Build the Merkle tree, then stream the data. So what about that Merkle tree? As you can see from this diagram, there is a comparison that happens between the two things. A Merkle tree is a data structure that's used in computer science to show differences and do comparisons. It's a very fast algorithm to do that. And it's really based on a node and leaf pattern. It gives you a good fast traversal of finding bad data, or in this case, missing data, in large volumes. Knowing all the reasons why to run a repair, when do you run it? Back to that main reason, maybe you had a node that was offline for a while, that's a good time. When you bring it back online, go ahead and run a repair. Just as long as it's not completely outside of that GC grace period. If the node's been out of GC grace, then that node should never go back into the cluster. You do a remove node, get rid of it. If it's still inside GC Grace, when you bring it back online, that's when you run a repair to make sure that the data on that node is consistent. We also recommend that you run it on a very regular basis inside the GC Grace window. So if your GC Grace is 10 days, you repair every single node in your cluster at least once inside that 10 days. That's what keeps your data consistent over time and is really just housekeeping of keeping track of all your data and making sure it's consistent without having to worry about if it's not or if there's been problems. You will have problems over time. Just expect it and run repairs all the time. So what about the workload on that node? Well, yes, repair can be a pretty heavy operation. Creating the Merkle tree isn't usually the biggest problem. It's the streaming. Moving that much data into the system is gonna be a heavy operation. You're dumping large volumes of data in a stream into the running node. So keep that in mind. If you do have a large event, 
you're going to need to compensate for that, knowing that that node is going to be pretty overwhelmed. There are a few things you can do to help mitigate that, such as running an incremental repair or even a subrange repair. This breaks down the load into smaller chunks and makes it easier for the node to digest. So what is a primary range repair? If you look at this diagram, you'll see that each one of these nodes has a range of data. That is its primary range. That's the token that's assigned to the node. So when you want to repair that primary range with its replicas, that is what's known as a primary range repair. You repair only that node's primary, and you do that as you walk through every single node. This is a way to limit the amount of data that you're repairing across the system. Only repairing the node's primary means that you have to do it on every single node. Subrange repair is a way to define a token range and say, I only want to do a small bit of the token range for that node. This is helpful if you're trying to do it just a little bit at a time or parallelize that task. There are many ways that that can run continuously, but it minimizes the amount of load put on each particular node. So how do you do it? Very simple. The node tool command with repair is the first stop. There's a lot of options inside the node tool repair command. As you can see on this list, you have PR, which is the partitioner range, or you have a way where you can put in the start and end tokens if you want to do a range repair. You can even do a repair on a particular key space and table. There are a lot of options, but know how to use repair for your use case. If you have a running cluster, getting to know how repair works is really critical. And if you're using OpCenter, the repair service is really helpful. It kind of takes away a lot of the pain, but also makes it a continuous operation in the background. So this is all about repair. There's a lot to learn, but I think this is a good start.